Namaste history enthusiasts and avid learners. Welcome back to DO Research Hub, your go-to destination for unlocking the mysteries of the past. I'm your guide through the corridors of time. Today, we embark on an intriguing journey deep into the annals of ancient Indian history, shining a spotlight on a formidable dynasty that left an indelible mark on the subcontinent, the Chola Empire. Whether you're a history student, a UPSC aspirant, or a passionate researcher, this video is tailor-made for you. Join me as we unravel the grandeur, accomplishments, and legacy of the Chola dynasty in a comprehensive exploration. So, without further ado, let's dive into the captivating saga of the Cholas. Chola Dynasty The Chola Dynasty, 300 CE, 1300 CE, was a Tamil kingdom in southern India, and it was one of the world's longest ruling empires. The first datable allusions to the Chola are in inscriptions left by Ashoka of the Maurya Empire in the 3rd century BCE. The dynasty governed over varied areas until the 13th century CE as one of the three crowned kings of Tamilakam, together with the Chera and Pandya. Despite these ancient beginnings, the time when the term Chola Empire is applicable only begins with the medieval Cholas in the mid-9th century CE. Cholas The Cholas, 300 CE, 1300 CE, were a great empire in southern India whose influence spread well beyond their borders. They were active participants in the Hindu cultural impact observed in Southeast Asia today. During the Chola period, Tamil culture and the arts achieved their pinnacle. The Chola's history is divided into four periods, the Sangam Cholas, the interregnum between the fall of the Sangam Cholas and the rise of the imperial medieval Cholas under Vijayalaya, the Vijayalaya dynasty, and finally the later Chola dynasty of Kulothunga Chola I from the third quarter of the 11th century. The Cholas were great warriors who used military strength to extend their empire, as well as astute politicians who struck deals and exchanged gifts with local kings to exert influence over new regions without the administrative difficulties of direct governance. The family acquired control of the new area via both real and metaphorical means. As their royal emblem, Chola rulers used a tiger symbol. Cholas, Origin Prior to the 7th century CE, there is relatively little written evidence for the Cholas. The primary sources of knowledge on the early Cholas include Sangam period Tamil literature, oral traditions, religious writings, and temple and copperplate inscriptions. This reign lasted for nearly five centuries, until the 13th century. However, the state of Andhra had a Chola monarchy that flourished far and wide about the 2nd century. Sangam literature emerged during the early days of Chola dominance. Kantaman was a famous king during this time period. The Cholas had ultimate power and growth during the medieval period. This is when rulers such as Adithyarai and Parantakai reigned. Rajaraj Chola and Rajendra Chola expanded the dominion into the Tamil area from here. Later Kulothunga Chola took over Kalinga to establish a strong rule. Later Cholas asserted a long and ancient pedigree as well. The Cholas are referenced in Ashokan edicts, written 273 BCE, 232 BCE, as one of the Maurayan Empire's southern neighbors who, while not subject to Ashoka, were amicable with him. There are also brief mentions of the Chola land and its towns, ports, and commerce in the Periplus of the Erythrean Sea and Ptolemy's little later book. The 5th century CE Buddhist scripture Mahavamsa chronicles a series of confrontations in the 1st century BCE between the natives of Ceylon and the Cholas. Early Cholas The Sangam literature mentions the early Chola monarchs for whom there is substantial proof. Scholars generally believe that this literature dates from the late pre-common era to the early years of the common era, 600 BCE, 300 CE. Legends concerning mythological Chola monarchs are also recorded in Sangam literature. 
These legends tell of the Chola monarch Cantamon, a purported contemporary of the philosopher Agastya, whose devotion created the river Kaveri. Among the Chola rulers believed to have existed and mentioned in Sangam literature, two names stand out, Karakala and Kosanganan. There are no solid ways of determining the sequence of succession, or of resolving their relationships with one another and with numerous other princelings of the same era. Their first capital was Ureir. Kaveripattinam was also an early Chola capital. According to the Mahavamsa, a Tamil adventurer named Elalan, a Chola ruler attacked and conquered the island of Sri Lanka with the support of a Mysore army in 235 BC. Interregnum Period of Cholas There is little evidence available regarding the three-century transition period from the end of the Sangam Age, about 300, to the reign of the Pandyas and Pallavas over the Tamil nation. The Calabras were an unknown dynasty that invaded Tamil land, overthrew the previous kings, and ruled during the time. Little is known about the Chola's destiny in the three centuries that followed until the accession of Vigilaya in the second part of the ninth century. Mutharayars slash Mutharajas controlled the kingdom for three centuries, according to inscriptions discovered in and around Tunjavur. Between 848 and 851 CE, Vigilaya Chola seized Tunjavur from Ilongo Mutharayar and ended their dynasty. Imperial Cholas Vigilaya was the founder of the imperial Chola dynasty, which marked the beginning of one of India's most magnificent empires. In 850, Vigilaya, likely a feudatory of the Pallava dynasty, took advantage of a war between the Pandya and Pallava dynasties and seized Tunjavur from Mathurayar, establishing the imperial line of the medieval Chola dynasty. Tunjavur became the imperial Chola dynasty's capital. During the medieval period, the Chola dynasty was at the pinnacle of its influence and strength. Chola rulers increased their realm and influence via their vision and leadership. Adithir I, the second Chola king, ended the Pallava dynasty by defeating the Pandian dynasty of Madurai in 885, occupied large parts of Kannada country, and had marital ties with the western Ganga dynasty. Rajaraja Chola I and Rajendra Chola I were the Chola dynasty's greatest kings, expanding it beyond the conventional boundaries of a Tamil state. The Chola Empire spanned from the island of Sri Lanka in the south to the Godavari Krishna River basin in the north, up to the Konkan coast in Batkal, the entire Malabar coast, the Chia region, Lakshadweep, and the Maldives. Rajendra's domain covered the Ganges Hugli-Damodar basin, as well as Sri Lanka and the Maldives. The kingdoms along India's east coast up to the Ganges recognized Chola suzerainty. In 1016, 1033, and 1077, three diplomatic missions were dispatched to China. Later Cholas Following Rajaraja's conquest of Venji, marriage and political connections amongst the eastern Kalukyas began. Kulothunga Chola I, his son Vikrama Chola, and other successors like as Rajaraja Chola II, Rajadharaja Chola II, and Kulothunga Chola III, who conquered Kalinga, Ilam, and Kadaha, headed the later Chola dynasty. However, the power of the later Cholas, beginning with Rajaraja Chola II and ending with Rajendra Chola III, was not as strong as that of the monarchs between 850 and 1215. Under Rajaraja Chola II, 1146-1175, the Chola Empire was still largely territorially intact, as evidenced by the construction and completion of the third grand Chola architectural marvel, the chariot-shaped Aravatesvara temple at Darasuram on the outskirts of modern Kumbakonam. Chola administration and territorial integrity were stable and prosperous until the rule of Kulothunga Chola III in 1215, but the decline of Chola power began following his defeat by Maravarman Sundara Pandyan II in 1215-16. Chola, Administration The king was in charge, and Chola inscriptions refer to him as Ko, Paramal Adigao, the Great One, and Kokamai Khandan, King of Kings. The king is described in the Chola inscriptions as a great warrior, conqueror, great patron of art, destroyer of evils, generous and a protector with a pleasing personality. The king went on royal tours to improve administration efficiency. 
The administration structure was larger than that of the Cheras, Pandyas, and Pallavas. However, after the death of Kulatunga I, it began to decline, and the power of local chieftains grew. The Rashtriyam slash Rajya empire was divided into eight mandals, provinces, each with its own governor slash viceroy, generally a prince. The provinces were subdivided further into Valinatus or Kadams, and each Valinatus was subdivided further into Nadus, districts, under Natar. Nadus was made up of several autonomous villages. The guilds and Srinis were also involved in administration. Nagaram was the assembly of mercantile groups slash merchants and was specific to different trades and specialized groups. The administrative structure grew in size, particularly during the reign of Rajaraja Chola I. The government at the time had a large land revenue department with several tiers that was primarily concerned with accounting. Revenue was assessed and collected by corporate bodies such as the UR, Nadu, Sava, Nagaram, and sometimes by local chieftains who passed the revenue to the center. During the reign of Rajaraja Chola I, the state launched a massive land survey and assessment project, and the empire was reorganized into Valinatus. The executive officer was the first to communicate the king's order to the local authority. Following that, the transactions records were drawn up and attested to by a number of witnesses who were either local magnates or government officials. Chola, Village Administration There were two types of Chola village assemblies. UR, the General Assembly of non brahmadiya Village Residents or Velanvegai Villages. The assembly was thought to have fewer than ten members. Sava or Mahasabha, two inscriptions from the Parantaka period discovered at Yutharamur provide information on the formation and operation of Savas. The Sava was an assembly of Brahmin slash adult male members in Agraharas, which were rent-free Brahmadiya villages with a high degree of autonomy. The Brahmana Sava and the Chola court were inextricably linked, for example, the Sava's resolution was made in the presence of an official delegated by the king. The members of the committee were chosen by lot or by rotation. Membership was governed by certain criteria such as land ownership, Vedic knowledge, good conduct, and so on. The members of the committee were known as Varya Paramakal, and they usually met in a temple or under a tree. The Chola village assembly was the sole owner of both the village lands and the newly acquired lands. Land revenue was the Chola Empire's main source of income, accounting for one-sixth of total output. The village assembly collected the revenue, which was paid in cash, kind, or both. The Chola government conducted the land survey. The inscriptions also mention land transfers through sale or gift. There are also several references to villages led by women. In a 902 CE inscription, a woman named Bataya is mentioned as the head of the village Barangir. Chola, Economy The main sources of revenue were land revenue and trade taxes. The Chola rulers issued gold, silver, and copper coins. At the local level, agricultural settlements served as the foundation for commercial towns Nagaram, which served as redistribution centers for externally produced items bound for consumption in the local economy as well as sources of products made by Nagaram artisans for international trade. The elite merchant groups, Samian, who organized and dominated the region's international maritime trade were at the top of this economic pyramid. Cotton cloth was one of the most important items exported to other countries. Ureir, the early Chola ruler's capital, was a well-known center for cotton textiles, which were praised by Tamil poets. Metal crafts reached their pinnacle during the 10th and 11th centuries, thanks to the patronage of Chola rulers such as Kembian Medevi. Wood steel was a significant export item. Farmers held some of the highest positions in society. A brisk internal trade in several articles was conducted by organized mercantile corporations in various parts of the country. Metal industries and jewelers' art had advanced to a high level of excellence. The production of sea salt was supervised and controlled by the government. Merchants were organized into guilds to conduct business. Foreign trade. Chola, foreign trade. The Cholas excelled in foreign trade and maritime activity, 
extending their reach to China and Southeast Asia. Southern India had developed extensive maritime and commercial activity by the end of the 9th century. South Indian guilds played an important role in interregional and international trade. The main trading partners were the Chinese Tang Dynasty, the Srivijaya Empire under the Salendras, and the Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad. The dynasty must also be credited with the emergence of a global market. It was crucial in connecting China's markets to the rest of the world. The Chola dynasty's market structure and economic policies were more conducive to large-scale, cross-regional market trade than the Chinese Sang dynasty. Chola, Society Several guilds, communities, and castes arose during the Chola period. The guild was one of South India's most important institutions, and merchants organized themselves into guilds. The Manigramam and Ayavol guilds were the most well-known, but other guilds such as Anjavanam and Valangir also existed. Farmers held some of the highest positions in society. The Velalar community comprised the country's nobility or landed aristocracy and was an economically powerful group. Under the Chola rulers, the Velalar community was the dominant secular aristocratic caste, providing courtiers, most army officers, lower ranks of the bureaucracy, and the upper layer of the peasantry. The people of the core Chola region were able to live productive and contented lives as a result of the region's stability. Military Chola, military. The Chola dynasty had a strong military, with the king serving as supreme commander. It had four components, cavalry, elephant corps, several infantry divisions, and a navy. There were bowmen and swordsmen regiments, with the swordsmen being the most permanent and dependable troops. The Chola army was stationed in local garrisons or military camps known as katagams throughout the country. Elephants were important in the army, and the dynasty had many war elephants. To protect their cities, the Chola rulers constructed a number of palaces and fortifications. The fortifications were primarily constructed of bricks, but other materials such as stone, wood, and mud were also used. The Chola dynasty's soldiers fought with steel weapons such as swords, bows, javelins, spears, and shields. The famous wood steel, which has a long history in South India dating back before the Christian era, appears to be used to make weapons as well. The army was made up of people from various castes, but warriors from the Kaikalar and Velalar castes played a significant role. The Chola navy represented the pinnacle of ancient India's sea power. It played a vital role in the expansion of the empire, including the conquest of the Ceylon Islands and naval raids on Srivijaya. The Chola rulers supported a martial art known as Salambam. Chola, Art and Architecture Chola architecture is associated with the imperial Cholas, who ruled southern India, including most of what is now Tamil Nadu, from 850 to 1250 CE. The Chola period was characterized by constant innovation in the fields of architecture and art. The Chola architecture was created by utilizing the enormous wealth gained through their aggressive conquest in endless wars against several Southeast Asian kingdoms. Under the Cholas, the Dravidian style of art and architecture reached its pinnacle. Temple construction was prolific during Rajaraja Chola's reign of 1009 years. Rajaraja I's Brihadiswara Temple in Tanjore is a work of art in South Indian art and architecture. The Vimana, Artamandapa, Mahamandapa, and a large pavilion in front known as the Nandi Mandapa make up the structure. Tanjore's magnificent Shiva temple is known as Rajarajeswara or Brihadaswara temple. Rajaraja Chola, Rajarajai, commissioned and completed this temple around 1009. Another notable Chola contribution to temple architecture is Rajendra I's Shiva temple at Gangakonda Kalapuram. Later Chola temples include the Aravatesvara temple in Tanjore district and the Kampaharesvara temple in Tripuvanam. Shiva, the primary deity of Chola temples, is depicted as a massive lingam set in a two-story sanctum. Through painted murals and sculptures, the wall surrounding the lingam was depicted with a mythological narrative. Chola, Bronze Statues of Natraja Chola bronzes are famous all over the world. The bronze statues of Natraja and dancing Shiva are works of art. 
Chola Queen Sembi in Mahadevi erected Nataraja's oldest freestanding stone sculptures. Nataraja statues depict dancing Shiva and date from the 10th century AD Chola Empire. It also represents Lord Shiva smiling while dancing, demonstrating the calm and energetic personality he possesses. The dance postures represent the universe's creation, preservation, and destruction. Chola paintings have been discovered on the walls of Narthamalai and Tanjore temples. Chola paintings. Narthamalai contains Chola paintings. The most important Chola paintings were discovered in Tanjore's Brihadiswara temple. The paintings were created on the walls of the shrine's narrow passageway. Two layers of paintings were discovered in the Brihadeshwara temples. The upper layer was completed in the 16th century during the Nayak period. The Chola paintings in the temple depict Lord Shiva's narration, Shiva as Kailash, Shiva as Tripurantaka, Shiva as Natraja, a portrait of the patron Rajaraja and his mentor Kuruvar, dancing figures, and so on. Chola, Literature The imperial Chola era was a golden age of Tamil culture, characterized by the prominence of literature. Many works, including the Rajarajesvara Nadakam, Viranakavyam, and Kanivana Puranam, are mentioned in Chola records. Chirudakativar's Javaka Chintamani and Talamali's Sulamani are two notable works by non-Hindu authors. Buddhamitra, a grammarian, wrote Virasolium, a text on Tamil grammar. Commentaries have been written on the great text Tolkapiyam, which deals with grammar but also mentions warfare ethics. Periyapuranam was another outstanding literary work from this era. During the reign of Kulothunga III, Kamban flourished. Nanal is a work on Tamil grammar from the Chola period. It covers all five areas of grammar. Under the patronage of the rulers, the period was especially significant for the development of Telugu literature. It was the era in which the great Telugu poets Takana, Katana, Marana, and Samana contributed to the literature. Religion Chola, Religion In general, Cholas practiced Hinduism. They were not swayed by the rise of Buddhism and Jainism as the Pallava and Pandya dynasties were. Kosanganan, an early Chola, was revered as a Hindu saint in both Sangam literature and the Shaivite canon. While the Cholas did construct their most important and largest temple dedicated to Shiva. This is supported by the fact that the second Chola king, Adifir I, 871-903 CE, constructed temples for both Shiva and Vishnu. There are allegations of intolerance towards Vaishnavites, particularly their Acharya, Ramanuj, during the period of the later Cholas. Even though Chola emperors like Rajaraja Chola I held titles like Sivapadasekaran, none of their inscriptions declared that their clan only and solely followed Shaivism or that Shaivism was the state religion during their rule. Decline of Cholas Decline of Cholas the Cholas were quite weak under Rajaraja Chola III and later, his successor Rajendra Chola III, and thus faced constant trouble. The growing influence of the Hoslas replaced the declining Kalukyas as the main player in Kannada country at the end of the 12th century, but they, too, faced constant trouble from the Saunas and Kalachuris, who were occupying Kalukya capital because those empires were their new rivals. One of the causes of inefficiency that led to the empire's demise was dishonesty and infiltration of armed forces in the empire's final days. Corruption played a significant role in the dynasty's demise. The Cholas could not accept their defeat at the hands of the Pandyas. With Kanchipuram already in the hands of the Telugu Cholas, the remaining Chola territories passed to the Pandyan king. The Chola dynasty ended in 1279, when King Maravarman Kula Sekra Pandyan I defeated Rajendra Chola III and established Pandya rule. Conclusion The Chola dynasty, 300 CE, 1300 CE, was a Tamil kingdom in southern India that ruled for over a millennium. As one of the three crowned kings of Tamilakam, along with the Chera and Pandya, the dynasty ruled over various areas until the 13th century CE. The Cholas were great warriors who expanded their empire through military might. They were active participants in the Hindu cultural influence seen today in Southeast Asia. As we conclude our expedition through the corridors of history, 
I hope this exploration of the Chola Empire has left you inspired and informed. If you found this video valuable for your studies, UPSC preparation, or research endeavors, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your fellow enthusiasts, and subscribe to DO Research Hub for more insightful content on ancient Indian history. Your support fuels our passion for unraveling the tales of the past. Thank you.